So today we're going to deal with taxation, specifically indirect taxation. Let's start off with the definition of what indirect taxation is. An indirect tax is one that is levied on goods and services. In contrast, by the way, a direct tax comes straight out of your income. But we're not concerned about that for now because theme one, micro, deals with indirect taxation. There are two types of indirect taxes that you need to know. The first has two names, a specific tax or a unit tax, exactly the same thing. A specific tax is where they tax each unit of an item by a certain fixed amount. So for example, packets of cigarettes. Every packet of cigarette could have a tax of, I don't know, five pounds or whatever it might be. The other type of tax has another name, which is an ad valorem tax. Ad valorem is just a fancy way of basically saying VAT. That's a good example of it. It's where they tax as a percentage. So VAT at the moment is 20%, meaning that every single item that you buy, they add a percentage of 20% on top of it. It's already priced in, so you don't really notice it when you go to the shops. The purpose of this video is to go through how to construct the diagram systematically, step by step, so that you never ever drop a single mark when it comes to an indirect tax diagram. Let's start with a specific tax. Step one is simply to draw a supply and demand diagram. It's as simple as that. Remember to label the equilibrium Q1, P1. Now, before we shift anything, let's go through the logic of what's about to happen. When the government imposes an indirect tax on a good, who passes the money over to the government? Bear in mind, that is not the same as saying who pays the government. But who passes it over to the government? The consumer or the producer? Well, let's think about it. When you go to the newsagent, and let's say you buy, I don't know, a can of Red Bull. When you pay for that can of Red Bull, you don't pay one pound, for example, and then go to number 11 Downing Street to the chancellor and go, excuse me, I owe you some tax, here's some money. Of course not. What happens is, is the producer, as part of the profits and revenue they generate, they have to pass some of it over to the government. Now they'll price this in, so their price is obviously gonna change when there's a higher tax. But the key thing to understand is that an indirect tax will always shift the supply curve because the producer is the one that has to go and give the money over to the government. So, which way is supply gonna shift, inwards or outwards? When they impose a tax, it is like an additional cost to the firm because they have to now pass some of that, government, that money over to the government. So supply is going to shift inwards. Now, if it's a specific tax, it's gonna shift inwards and parallel. That is how you know that it's a specific tax. Because if I were to identify any random point on my supply curve, and I were to draw a straight line down from that point to the old supply curve, can you see that that is consistently the same at every point? What is that? That represents the tax rate. It represents how much the government is taxing per unit. Bear that in mind. So now we shift the supply curve inwards parallel and we draw our new equilibrium, P2, Q2. The next step is I would always like you to put your pen on the new equilibrium, always the new equilibrium, and draw a straight line down until it connects with the old supply curve. Remember that that distance is the tax rate. Now go across from those two points until you hit the axes. That area, any ideas what that area represents? That area represents government tax revenue. That is the amount of money the government is generating from the tax, because think about the two things that you need to know to determine the government tax revenue. Number one, I need to know how much they're taxing per unit, so the tax rate. Well, we said the tax rate is that distance. And number two is I need to know how many units are actually sold. I can only tax what they sell. This is why you have to put your pen on the new equilibrium. Because if you put it on the old equilibrium, yes, the distance is still correct in terms of the tax rates but now the width of your area would be incorrect because they're no longer selling Q1 units anymore. They are selling Q2 units. So put your pen on the new equilibrium, straight line down to the old supply curve, go across, and that is the area for the government tax revenue. But we're not done just yet. There are two more things that we need to make sure that we always shade and label. The first is something called consumer incidence of tax. It's just a fancy way of them saying how much of this tax is being paid for by the consumer. How much are they burdening? I would always start with the consumer incidence of tax because it's really logical. The two questions that you ask yourself are simply this. What price did the consumer initially pay for the good? Well, they paid P1. What did they now pay for the good following the tax? 
they now pay P2. You see the difference between P2 and P1? That area must represent the consumer incidence of tax. And whatever's left, well, that's what the producer has to pay. That is the producer incidence of tax. So always shade that in and label according to consumer and producer. And that's the diagram. In essence, that's everything that you need to do for a specific tax diagram. Now let's deal with an ad valorem tax. It's exactly the same thing except for one difference. So again, let's draw a supply and demand diagram. So supply and demand over here. Get the equilibrium as always. The difference now is that with an ad valorem tax, supply doesn't just shift inwards. It shifts inwards and it pivots. And the rationale behind that is simply this. Imagine that I said to you that you spend 100 pounds before tax and VAT is 20%. Well, you're paying a tax of 20 pounds. If on the other hand, you are now spending 1,000 pounds, 20% of 1,000 is 200. That is a lot more than 20. In other words, as you buy more and more units, the tax increases more and more and more. Hence why it not only shifts inwards, it also pivots. So simply shift it inwards and pivot it. Label the new equilibrium, it's exactly the same thing again. Put your pen on the new equilibrium. Draw a straight line down until you hit the old supply curve. Again, that is the tax rate. Go across from those two points, shade in the consumer incidence of tax, the difference between P1 and P2, and shade in the remainder, that is the producer incidence of tax, and the combination of the two is the government tax revenue. And that is how you pick up every single mark on an indirect tax diagram. Check out some of our other videos and be sure to subscribe.